everyone, today we will learn how to derive Michaelis Menten kinetics equation and what are the meanings of the kinetics parameters. So let's start with the introduction to homogeneous enzyme kinetics. In this slide, we see the formation of the ES complex from the free enzyme and the substrate and the dissociation of the ES complex to the free enzyme and the product. K1, K-1 and K2 are the reaction rate constants. K1 for the association of the ES complex, K-1 is for the dissociation of the ES complex into the free enzyme and the substrate, and K2 for the dissociation of the ES complex into the free enzyme and the product. When we are working with the michaelis menten kinetics model, as the next, we track the reaction components. First, the substrate. So here what we see is the change in the substrate concentration over time and the minus is for the consumption, for the conversion of the substrate. So which is equal to the K1 multiplied by E multiplied by S minus K minus 1 multiplied by the ES. So this is the equation number one. Equation number two is the formation of the product so the change in the concentration of the product over time is equal to the K2 multiplied by the ES complex. Equation number three is for tracking the ES complex. So the change in the ES complex concentration over time is equal to the K1 multiplied by E multiplied by S minus K minus 1 multiplied by ES minus K2 multiplied by ES. For the simplification, we can rewrite the equation number 3 by taking the ES complex here in parenthesis K minus 1 plus K2. So as the next, we would like to learn the two assumptions that were generated to understand the enzyme kinetics. In 1913, Michaelis and Menten they came up with rapid equilibrium conditions assumption. And this assumption states that the substrate and the ES complex are in equilibrium which is not distributed by the decomposition of the ES complex into the free enzyme and the product. And they worked with a dissociation constant, KD, which is equal to the K-1 divided by K1 is equal to the E multiplied by S divided by ES complex. About 10 years later, Briggs and Haldane, they came up with a second assumption, with a new assumption, which is based on steady state conditions. This assumption states within a very short time after starting the reaction, the ES complex will build up to a nearly steady state level. So with this assumption now, we can write the change in the ES complex concentration over time is equal to the zero. And later we work with the Km, the michaelis menten constant, which includes the dissociation constant, which was basically used 10 years ago, and plus K2 divided by K1. So this is the michaelis menten constant based on the steady state assumptions which was basically the assumption was basically uh, explained by Briggs and Haldane in 1925. And with this assumption, Km, the michaelis menten constant, is no longer a dissociation constant. So now with the information that we have now in hand, the change in the ES complex concentration over time is equal to the zero, we rewrite the equation that we worked a couple of slides before. So now K1 multiplied by E multiplied by S minus K minus 1 plus K2 multiplied by ES complex concentration is equal to the zero. Another information that we have to learn is the total enzyme concentration is equal to the ES complex plus the free enzyme. Rewriting will give us that the total enzyme concentration is equal to the ES complex plus ES complex multiplied by Km divided by the substrate. The rewriting will give us 
the ES, concent ES complex concentration that we can take out multiplied by 1 plus Km divided by S. So what we also learned before, that the change in the product concentration over time is equal to the K2 multiplied by the ES. And if all total enzyme concentration that we have in the reaction system, or the total enzyme concentration in the form of the ES complex, then we can reach the maximum reaction rate constant, or maximum reaction rate, sorry. This is the Vmax. So when we combine now these two information, we have in hand the michaelis manton equation. V, the reaction rate, is equal to the maximum reaction rate multiplied by the substrate concentration divided by Km plus S. So this is the michaelis manton equation now we have in our hands. What will be the schematic representation of michaelis manton equation? In this figure, michaelis manton graphical representation in the x-axis, we have the substrate concentration, and on the y-axis, we have the reaction rate. So these units are just examples. These gray data points are from the experiments. So using different substrate concentrations, we measure different reaction rates. And this is the michaelis manton graphic representation. In this graphic representation, we have three different regions based on enzyme kinetics. The first region is first order kinetics region, whereby the reaction rate is linearly depending on the substrate concentration. In the other region, so it's the last part of this uh, michaelis manton graphic representation, we have zero order kinetics region, whereby the reaction rate is close to the maximum reaction rate. And in between, we have michaelis manton kinetics region that we define using the michaelis manton equation. So now we move to the part about the significance, the meanings of the kinetics parameters. michaelis manton constant. michaelis manton constant is an important characteristic of an enzyme which is significant for its biological function. It depends on the particular substrate and environmental conditions in which we measure this michaelis manton and these environmental conditions are pH, temperature and the reaction media. Km value is independent of enzyme concentration and usually has values between 10 to the power minus x, 10 to the power minus 2 molar. Mathematically, michaelis manton constant is the substrate concentration where we reach the half of the Vmax value. As the next, what is the significance of the Vmax value? Maximum reaction rate. Maximum reaction rate is achieved when all enzyme molecules are saturated with the substrate. As the next, we have to learn turnover frequency. Turnover frequency of an enzyme, which is the number of the substrate molecules converted into the product by an enzyme molecule in a unit time when the enzyme is fully saturated with the substrate. Indeed, turnover frequency is the K2 value, which is also called as Kcat value. And the turnover frequency so this is the turnover per unit time, is typically in the range of 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 8 per second. Neither the Km value nor the Vmax value alone do tell us really significantly something about the enzyme performance. That's why we have to use another parameter which is called as catalytic efficiency. And this is the Kcat value divided by Km. Only a mixture of both values, Km value and the Vmax value, gives significant information about the enzyme. So Kcat is the rate constant for the conversion of the ES complex to the product. Km value is the measure for the binding of the substrate to the enzyme. And catalytic efficiency is the parameter that we have to use to compare the performance of different enzymes for some substrates that we would like to analyze. With this, we reached end of our lecture. Thank you so much.